questions, ask me, crack on. And I'm very sorry that I'm a bit um, a bit under the cosh for time tonight <laughs> and probably the children will want to go in a minute. But anyway, never mind, uh, is what it is. Anyway, I've got some questions already, so I'm going to crack through them. Uh, big one here, how to help rippling. That's a big one to start with, isn't it? Um, right, we've got a bit of a spiel. I had breast implants in 2016, and ever since surgery, I've been experience, experiencing number. I think that's numbness in the lower pole. I cannot feel anything underneath the breasts and nipples. My nip implants are also rippling. My surgeon advised me to go smaller in size to avoid complications. Do you have any advice and can you help me correct this? Yeah, so um, in terms of the numbness, uh, so surgery in 2016, so that's uh, five years ago. So numbness in the lower pole. I can't feel anything underneath the breasts and nipples. You do sometimes get persistent numbers around the scar. Um, it's not normally a big problem. There's not a lot you can do for the numbness. So can't really do anything for the numbness. That's just something that can happen, unfortunately. Um, in terms of the rippling, yes, there is something we can't can be done for that but it is a difficult problem to correct rippling is a difficult problem um, to fix and it is basically a sort of physical thing if you hold an implant up and hold it vertically you can see the ripples in it all implants ripple the question is can you see the rippling and so you can usually see the rippling if someone's very thin and if they haven't got much covering over their chest you can see the rippling particularly if you can see your ribs so if you can see your ribs you're very unlike you're very likely to be able to see the ripples of the implants so that is a problem what can we do, do about it? Well, there's a couple of things you can do about it. You really, what you need to do is try and get more cover over the implant. And there's always a balance between implant and breast. And the more balance that is in favor of breast, the better. So um, if you can get um, 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 more breast tissue to implant ratio, so therefore, <laughs> smaller implants, basically what I'm saying, I don't know if I'm doing it, difficult, making it hard, but smaller, downsizing the implant is a good idea, basically, because you got you can't, you can't get more breast tissue but you can go with smaller implants so a smaller implant all right that's what i'm saying yeah smaller implants simple as that i've got much time go on about it like this just make it clear smaller implant is a good idea but i just said you can't get more breast tissue well you can sort of you can put on weight that's not very helpful i know or you can do fat grafting you can inject some fat over to get some better covering so that is something you can do for rippling Fat grafting has got risks of damaging the implant, introducing infections and stuff. So it's not without risk, but fat grafting is a is a is a good potential often for rippling. And the other one, probably the probably the best, well, up there with the best, is changing plane. If the implant's on top of the muscle, you can put it under the muscle. Now, obviously, if it's under the muscle, you haven't got that option. But if it is on top of the muscle, putting it under the muscle is an option. Now, the muscle just covers it here, so you might still get rippling here, but that's an option. Um, the other thing is you could sort of look at the type of implant you've got and how much fill that they've got. Some have got more fill than others, so ripple less but feel firmer. Um, that's a bit marginal, but um, I think putting out the muscles is a good one and um, some downsizing is a good one and potentially fat grafting, you know, maybe a combination or maybe just, you know, but it's a difficult problem in the end of the day and it is because you are so slim. So it only really happens with people who are very slim. So rippling is a difficult problem to correct. Um, Next question, please. Um, I'll go in a minute. Uh, how do we move pyelonidal sinuses? Um, uh, pyelonidal cyst. So pyelonidal cyst. Now we go and yeah, cyst removal. Yeah, come and have your cyst removed. Find out some more information at cyst removal. We've got all this stuff on information about cyst removal, not pyelonidal cyst. So a pyelonidal cyst or a pyelonidal sinus is it the uh, in your natal cleft? Is it the bottom lower part of your back at the top of your your, your natal cleft, the, the buttocks? You know, the top of the buttocks. And it's a really difficult problem to correct. It is not a normal cyst. It, it is uh, it is usually due to something like hair follicles from going down your back. It's from often men with sort of hairy backs and the hair follicles go in the back. And when you're sitting, you get hot and sweaty. It's uh, the J Jeep driver's bum. Elaine, good to see you. Hope you are recovering and putting your feet up. Um, it's, I'm rushing because I've got to go to the cinema in a minute. Um, so it's it's um, it's a, it used to be called Jeep Drivers Bump in the in the in the army because they used to sit and get hot and sweaty and it, and you get infections and and the hair follicles grow into and cause these little things called pyelonidal sinuses um, or, or, or it can form a cyst there um, but lorry drivers and things like that it's, it's common um, but it's extremely difficult problem to correct and as plastic surgeons to be honest with you we tend not to really get involved in it we only get involved with them late stage so in the early stages. Um, um, thanks, Elaine. You too. In the early stages, it's usually a general surgeon who would do that, and they would actually, rather than removing the cyst, 
it's actually opening it up, letting it drain, letting the evil humors out is the thing that we do normally. Um, so um, that, and that'll be general surgeons. You leave it open, you pack it. They're really difficult problems to direct. So a pilonidal cyst is completely different to a normal cyst. And it's something that a general surgeon would treat rather than a plastic surgeon. Um, and so uh, the, in answer to your question, do we remove pilonidal cysts? The answer is no, we do not. After having breast implants, would I be able to breastfeed? The answer to that is yes. Resounding yes, absolutely fine. Assuming you can breastfeed now. So some people can't breastfeed, but having implants does not affect your ability to breastfeed one way or the other. Whether the implant goes on top of or behind the muscle, the implant goes behind the breasts. So all the ducts and all that sort of stuff are still intact. So it will not affect your ability to breastfeed at all. The only thing I would say, if someone asks me that question, I'm thinking, hold on a minute, are you thinking of getting pregnant? Because if you think you're getting pregnant, then that might say change the size and the shape of your breasts and that might mess up the surgery that you've had if you had your breasts just like you like it have by having implants in and then you have children that can affect it so if someone asks me that question before they've had implants i'd be thinking yeah you'll be fine breastfeeding but if you if you're worried about that maybe you better wait until you've had implants if you are have already got implants and you're asking that question then obviously you, you know you can't that's what it is what it is so don't worry about it and just carry on and have children and see what happens but it might affect the size and the shape of your breasts something to be aware of um uh do you do any exams to the breast before you proceed no i'm talking i'm, I'm assuming you're talking about well it doesn't really matter what you're talking about but some kind of breast surgery implants reduction things i don't I know some surgeons do routinely do mammograms and stuff, but I don't do anything aside from the routine screening that you would have based on your age. But um, uh, if you, I, I don't do any extra screening of the breast um, prior to doing a breast implant or a, uh, a breast reduction. Um, is there, I don't know what the argument is for it because you know if we, because it's not going to affect your ability you can still do the screening afterwards if you develop a lump of things i mean you could argue it's a baseline but it could bring up things which you know there's no evidence to suggest that screening for people prior to the routine screening is going to be beneficial so just because you're having surgery i think you could argue it, but i don't do it is the answer no i don't do any routine screening to patients having breast uh, surgery whether it be well whatever it be uh, do I have to have any blood tests before having breast implants? So again, I don't routinely ask for any blood tests. Having said that, the hospitals do. So the hospitals often want certain blood tests. Sometimes they want a full blood count. Sometimes they want to group and save. So the hospitals might want uh, uh, blood tests. I don't ask for them, but if it's hospital policy, what can I say? I work at a hospital. If that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. Most of my patients are, routine, are fit and well and don't need any routine bloods. Obviously, if you're not fit and well, we might do some pre, uh, routine bloods on you if you've got medical problems. But uh, uh, the the, um, the standard patient doesn't have any significant medical problems and doesn't necessarily need to have any tests done. How long is the recovery after having breast implants? All right. Well, you have a dressing on. You have a bra on straight off the bat. You're in hospital either overnight or you some you can often go home same night. So either home that night or or home the next day. Uh, come back, see us a week later, take the dressings off. During that week, you can wash and shower, move about. It's good to move about, but you will feel a bit knocked back, a bit jaded, you won't feel great. Just take it easy, watch TV, relax, but keep your legs moving, keep your bum moving, keep everything circulating, because we don't want you getting a DVT or, or anything like that. So the first week, you're not gonna feel much, you're not, not gonna feel great. Then you come and have your dressing off. Then once your dressing's off, you won't have any dressings on. You just need a bit of gauze in your bra. We'll get you um, up and moving about and things. And we, um, uh, so after the first week, you'll be feeling better. So then you'll be, <laughs> this, it, does this sound really rushed? Would I have been better not doing this? I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd better do it because I'm, you know, consistency. Anyway, maybe I should, anyway, I'm doing it. Um, what happens after the first week? Second week, you'll be feeling better. Computer stuff, working at home on the internet and, you know, doing your emails and stuff. You'll not be feeling great the second week. Driving, you might be able to drive after one week. I normally say two weeks to be sure. Often people are okay at one week, but it's hard to guarantee that for everybody. After a couple of weeks, then you can start getting maybe the gym lower body, you know, the stepper. It's called something cross trainer, I think, but not arms. It's a cross trainer or um, what else? Um, the stepper or... Um, the exercise bike is a good one, low impact after a couple of weeks. And then um, it's normally about six weeks before you're doing heavy stuff with your arms. So again, if you can if you can work, if you're doing an office-based job, two weeks is normal. 
Um, but if you're doing something heavy, if you're working in a wet warehouse or something on lifting, then six weeks before you do anything too heavy and then just start doing things heavy at six weeks. You don't go straight into heavy stuff. You just start. Um, in terms of the scar, in terms of the settling, the shape, et cetera, et cetera, I normally say it starts about three months. Numbness, as I say, there's often numbness to start with. It usually settles, but sometimes it doesn't. Like that earlier on, patient earlier on had a bit of numbness in the lower pole. So sometimes there's a risk of persistent numbness, but there's often numbness at the beginning. So you're looking at that sort of stuff starting about three months. It can take six, 12, or even 18 months for it to really properly settle. So it is a bit of a long haul in terms of the shape and, and, and the swelling and all that. Um, but in terms of the immediate work and stuff, it's just a few weeks. Hope that's been helpful. I am really, got, I'm sorry, I've got to go to the cinema. So looking forward to seeing June, love it, read the books, love it. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. And I will see you next week. And I do, what's happening next week where it's not half term, is it? Or is it? Is it? God, it might be. Natalie, what you got? Hope you're well. Do you do advice consultations? I need some advice. Natalie, you're a patient of mine, sweetheart. I know it was in the NHS, wasn't it? So, of course, you can get in touch and I will see you in the clinic. I will do We can do a phone call. We'll do a video call. Open door for all of my patients. So if you've ever got any problems, drop me an email. If I can answer it by email, I will. If you want to set up a call, we'll do a call. If you want to come to clinic and see me, we'll come to see me. Um, I won't charge you. I don't charge my patients for any consultations at any time, even if it was God knows how many years ago was it. Did I actually do anything or do we just talk about it? I can't even remember now, it, but it was in it, wasn't it? It was in the NHS. Did I do some breast research? I can't even remember. But anyway, yes, get in touch. Happy to see you. God, right. I've got to go, guys. I've got to go. Natalie, give us a shout. Drop me a line. Instagram, you've been lovely tonight. Nice to see you all. And I will go and watch June and hopefully be a bit more relaxed next time. Take it easy. Stop in the stream.